Hello, and I'm your host here again today, Jonathan McGuinness with the Questions of Fire podcast. I'm absolutely delighted today to have our next guest because as old as I am, there's a little boy inside of me with a lot of big dreams. And this guy is going to do one of those dreams that maybe we all did as five or six or seven year olds. And maybe those of us who are approaching 50 and beyond are, are still dreaming, but this guy is setting out to do it. I'd like to welcome you today to Peter Lawless. Peter. Thank you very much for taking the time out, you know. Good morning, Jonathan. Uh, well, that's a good description. It is a, it is a, uh, a boyhood dream. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, let me tell it for everybody who's here. Peter has decided this August he's going to go nonstop. We're going to ask him about what these things mean. Solo all the way around the world on a boat. So before we even get into the details, well, what does that mean, Peter, to go solo and non-stop a- a- around the world? Maybe you could just explain that to start with. Uh, solo, non-stop and unassisted uh, around the world. So when I, I, I'm leaving from Kilrush in County Clare in Ireland, um, yeah. I, I sail on my own solo. I won't stop anywhere until I circumnavigate the globe and end up back on the west coast of Ireland in Kilrush again. Uh, unassisted means there's no outside. I don't take on any food or water off anybody, or it's just me and 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 my boat around and back nonstop. Wow, you're begging lots of questions. I, I have loads of questions. The, the last one intrigued me a lot, actually. But before before we get into this, Peter, you know. Not everybody has the guts, the guts, the courage, or even the background, or, or feels inspired to actually do this. Well, what, what's your background in sailing, and what inspired you to sort of take on this challenge, Peter? My background, myself and my brothers and my sister Helen, we all grew up sailing with my mum and dad. So since I can remember, I was on the water. Um, my oh, dad, <clears throat> excuse me, my dad had uh, built a uh a boat himself and by the time i was growing up we had a galway hooker you'd be familiar with them they were a traditional yep. irish boat um so i grew up sailing that with my dad and then and my brothers and my sister and then uh on loch derg mostly on the river shannon down the estuary Beautiful. and skeeton points uh, my dad also had a nave vogue another traditional boat a corrug so in Dingle, we used, we used to do a lot yeah. of fishing out of that and out to the Blasket Islands. We were always on the water, Jonathan. Uh, my own oh, lovely. personal sailing started, um, I was only talking to my sister about this recently. When when I was four, my dad, uh, he got a, an optimist and he, he just put me in the optimist. I was delighted to get into it and he pushed me out and I was kind of nervous. And I took to it straight away and I loved it. Yeah, I'd be oh, flying fantastic. around the harbour in that all the time, and I just, I just grew up watching my dad sailing. We all did. Uh, I went oh. down to a hern uh, dinghy from that. It's like a mirror. Uh, uh, my friend had a four twenty. I used to sail that a lot with him, Danny. Uh, all of them, yeah. And then when I was twelve, my dad bought me uh, a Shannon One design. It's a, it's a an eighteen or nineteen foot open timber boat with one sail, a gunter rig. So I, I sailed that all over. I sailed that up and down uh, the length and breadth of Loch Derg for, for, for the next good few years. That's where I learned most of my sailing because she, I, she had a crew of three and I sailed on my own at 12 or 13. So I was very light for her. So oh, you, you, had to learn how, you had to learn how to um, had not to have too much sail up or you were getting in trouble. So I, I used to even take the small jib off my dad's Galway hooker and, yeah. and use that for downwind and i just learned a lot from that and and then i just progressed up through the boats up through different boats i think at 19 i got my first boat with a cabin that was like heaven i could sleep in it uh absolutely yeah and then i went up through just a different boats uh i, I mean i had a a wave at 26 foot then when my kids were growing up we had a 26 foot i got a 29 foot timber boat that broke my heart. <laughs> why did why did it break your heart? What happened? Uh, she was just old. She I I bought her. Uh, she was half sunk when I bought her, and uh, but I learned a lot from that as well. <laughs> um, and then I went on. Up to, uh, <laughs> yeah, I had a, a window thirty, a lovely long keeler. I did a lot of offshore on her. 
Um, I bought, believe it or not, two Excalibur 36, the Vandestats. They were beautiful. Uh, one of the nicest boats I've sailed, I'd say, yeah. I had a steel boat, timber, concrete, everything. I had, so my, I've been sailing consecutive, nonstop all my life. I never, I never stopped sailing. So uh, the next step for me in my head was, was uh, a solo circumnavigation. And it, it kind of just fell into place and it, it, it just seemed to be the right time now. So Brilliant. Now is the Brilliant. time. Excellent, excellent. And and tell us a bit about the maybe the boat that you're going to take on this journey with you. Your... I I actually had the Excalibur thirty six in a boat yard in Valencia Island, and I spotted uh, this beautiful rival forty one waxwing that, that that I now have that, that that I'm using for the circumnavigation. Yeah, and and I got I just fell in love with her. I thought she was the most beautiful design and lovely big high bow and. She was just incredible. She just caught my eye. Never dreamed that I'd own her. And a couple of years later, I saw her for sale. And uh, I just put in an offer. I didn't have a whole pile of money, but I put in an offer, uh, not having enough to buy her. And my own boat sold in the meantime. So I got lucky, Jonathan. And I ended up getting her. Uh, she had just come back. The previous owners had sailed her around the world for seven years. And wow. They were fairly well-known uh, Peter and Susan Gray from Dublin. Um, so she was well fitted out, but she was tired when I bought her. So I obviously I've, I've done a full refit. That was about five years ago. I've been working on her since. Um, but she's an incredible sea boat, big displacement hull, uh, three quarter long. It's, she's like a long keel, but she has a skeg on the back. Uh, she's just incredible, solid sea boat. She's absolutely perfect for what I'm doing. Oh, lovely. I was just thinking, I hope she's a little bit like a horse, Peter, because if you get tired, she might know the way home, you know, <laughs> that's what I was thinking, uh, yeah, since she's already gone yeah. around the world, you know? Yeah. Brilliant. She, yeah, ah. she's proven herself. She, she, They got a bad knockdown off New Zealand in a typhoon. Uh, they blew, they blew, yeah, they damaged her, blew a few windows, a few ports, and uh, yeah. they, still, they still sailed her back to New Zealand. With a head sail, you know. So I mean, when I heard that, I was going, "Whoa," you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, now that you're preparing it yourself, I know it's done it already, but you're preparing her for this journey. What are some of the biggest lessons that you've learned in? What do I need to be ready for? What does she need to be ready for for this voyage? I, I know you've probably had hundreds of things to do, but what would be sort of the one or two big things that you've really learned about the boat and in prep? Um, preparation wise, yeah, you're right. It's just, it's just, it, you could, you could do a whole show on, on the prep. Um, a couple of things I, I've strengthened her, even though she's a, a, a beautifully solid boat. I mean, I had a guy check her out, an engineer, and he couldn't get over the, the thickness of the hull and, and just how she was laid up and built. Uh, she's, she was built in the eighties and she was very, very well built to Lloyd specs, you know? So, uh, but I, I did, um, I'm putting chain plates on the stern so I can I can attach a bridle for towing a drogue, a Jordan series. Okay. Uh, that's vital to be able to keep her her her, uh, her stern to the to the weather when it gets nasty, and it will. Uh, I've re-rigged her fully, all new sails, new rigging, new running rigging. It's just endless. I mean, uh, uh, water makers. I haven't fitted that yet. Satcoms got to fit all them. There's just there's. It's a full-time job fitting her out. It's just a full-time job. Luckily, I could do it all myself. I work in boats. I, 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 I'd, um, I couldn't imagine okay. what it would cost to pay somebody to do this. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so when you're going to go now, Peter, obviously there, there, there's many things to consider. Obviously, you've mapped out the route. You can see a picture on your website the way you're going to go. Why did you pick? that route now i looked at it you go down the atlantic and you start going east around sort of the bottom of the obviously first africa then australia after the long trip and then under south america and back up the atlantic why that route uh peter if you don't mind that's that's the traditional route that that's well first of all it's the non-stop route there's no landmass i mean i can just keep going uh I mean, yeah. your only other choice would be the Suez Canal or the Panama Canal, which you'd have to stop. It couldn't be non-stop. It's the traditional ah, okay, delivery. okay, okay. Yeah. Brilliant. And, and now the, the, the one... 
the one the one thing you caught me in the beginning when you said I said non-stop and solo and I left out unassisted now so we, and you said something around food and fuel one I, I was talking to my kids and they were saying now what would you ask Peter now he's going on this is it well dad you know how, is he not going to have to stop for food or fuel or and so I'm just going to ask you the question how do you manage those two particular things you know going around the world uh, fuel fuel isn't a problem actually but uh, to, just to go back the kids kids ask the best questions they really absolutely do. absolutely yeah, practical stuff you know what, my, my son Liam, my son Liam asked me that one Peter for you just so you know who it was you know okay okay well uh fuel isn't a problem uh, my tank holds 320 liters of diesel uh I'll probably carry some extra on the deck to, and as soon as I you know but it's it's not a big issue. I mean, I'd probably have a 400 litres of diesel. I'm not going to use the engine. Uh, I'd probably run the engine when, I, when I'm when i running the uh, the water maker, maybe or maybe not. And and maybe to steam across some of the doldrums at the equator. But mm -hmm. in general, I, I, I don't plan on using the engine much unless I have to charge the batteries for an emergency or something. But so fuel isn't an issue. Food. Uh, is massive food food is just my, my wife kathy is is uh is on the food side of things for me and i mean we're just constantly adding to the list uh taking stuff off the list weight is an issue yeah uh, i probably i'll be using freeze-dried food uh expedition foods um they're giving me a good deal on foods and i've tried them they're, they're pretty good you just add boiling water into the bag and it's a pretty good meal spaghetti bolognese chicken curry but you, <laughs> I, yeah but you don't want to eat them every day you know so well that, that, that's what I, liam, liam was saying to me will he have like three or four days of fresh food and then jump into canned or whatever else it is so you, you're basically going to become an astronaut for eight months is that what you're telling me <laughs> no uh i i ate them every day for for uh, fourteen days, just to make sure that it wouldn't have bad effects on me, and they didn't. They were good. Brilliant. And and they're really nice. But I'm not. I I, I plan to use them when I can't cook when it's too rough or I'm really busy doing sail changes. Or, uh, you know, or it's they they will be very handy. Just boil. You can actually pour cold water into them in an emergency situation and still eat them. So, but in general, oh, we, we, and will, will you Kathy, will you fish? Sorry. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead, Peter. Uh, myself and Cathy, my wife, we, we've lived on, on Waxwing a good bit and worked off her over the years. So we, we're quite used to cooking and, and eating. So, I mean, when you have rice, pasta, uh, onions, garlic, ginger, they last forever. Well, for a long time. Uh, you, you'll always make a meal. Even if you put a can of corned beef or ham into it, you have a, a not bad meal. So, oh, brilliant! Uh, yeah, no, obviously, I, I, I mean, jars of olives. You live in 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 olive country, so I mean, jars of olives last indefinitely. Uh, cans of corn. You can make a really nice dinner near nearly all the time. Uh, oh, brilliant! Wraps last pretty well. I bake bread myself on board. Um, yeah, oh, very good. But but it's very important. Uh, that I eat well, Jonathan. I mean, the the boat will look after herself if I'm looking after her, you know. So, but if if I'm not fit, things things get yeah things get dodgy then. So I have to eat and maintain my body as well as I can with supplements, with it, with minerals, with everything. So, so just on 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 that point, you made me think of a new question, Peter. In terms of exercise, if you're going to be on the boat. Will you walk up and down the boat for 20 minutes a day? Or, or you know, do you need to, we all need to move our body a certain amount. Have you thought about that one or you're? <laughs> it'll be, a, it'll be a full workout all day long. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Everyone, everyone imagines you're, you're lying around reading books and nothing to do. And I mean, uh, I mean, first of all, you're sailing the boat all day long. You're navigating. You're cooking, you're cleaning, you're eating, you're washing. You know, you're doing a full, and then yeah. you're up and down all the time, adjusting sails, adjusting course, and and you will have good downtime. But uh, you'd be kept going. I mean, I remember my dad when he came back. He 
he was he was 70 when he came back from the circumnavigation and he he yeah. honestly was a couple of years younger than when he left he was fit as a fiddle wow yeah brilliant brilliant so and it's a, it's a re- co- sorry you you sail no. yourself so you're constantly counterbalancing and you're always moving you're always moving Oh, brilliant, brilliant. No, no, well, then we, we, we can expect to see a younger Peter then in, uh, in, in next year. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. So when it, when it comes to the next thing, I, I think this is obviously a, a critical one, the weather. Now, we're, we're used to sort of weather forecast and we all have our apps and we, we, we can also check from the boat and I'm sure you have your digital displays, but considering weather, they're that far away and in those sort of particular oceans and seas. How are you going to manage your forecasting, Peter? That was that was a huge concern um, because it's vital. I mean, things have, have improved so much uh, technology-wise. And, you know, from the old days, it was just you, 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 you took what you got. And it's still kind of like that. But uh, I, I was on the Dermot and Dave show here in, in Ireland on, on uh, Today FM, and, and a company heard me. And, and they sponsored me, uh, it's called the Sailor Fleet One. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It, it's it's a sat phone, but it also gives me a, uh, like a, a modem on board. So I'll have internet. So it my, my iPhone and my iPad uh, will come alive when I connect to it. Brilliant. Yeah. Now, I haven't tried it yet, but I heard it's, 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 uh, it's really good. Uh, so that will give me... Every morning I can just get, like go on predict wind or whatever and get a forecast, see what's coming up behind me. Uh, now it's quite expensive, <laughs> but they gave me a good data package as well, which was uh, the company's called Class K L A S, uh, Class Group. They're fantastic. They, they do all sorts Brilliant. of problems. But anyway, um, so I'll have not only will I have the forecast, but I'll I'll have uh, connectivity with my family. Um, I I can email. I think I have WhatsApp and stuff like that. So that's going to be incredible. Oh, well, that's, that, you know, that, that kind of changes that you can communicate with uh, the outside world as you go. That's, uh, yeah. that'll be fantastic the whole way around. Yeah, I definitely have email. And I do, I do, um, every week I put up, I have a YouTube channel and every week I put up a video. Most of it's just been preparation, but I, I plan to do one weekly at sea. So if I can upload that, from sea that'd be incredible it'd be lovely to watch i'd love to watch that you know oh brilliant we, well we'll be following you peter we'll be we'll be watching in and tuning in to to see how you're doing uh, so you will have a little bit of spare time peter uh, and I, 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 are you going to bring any you know people often ask the question if you were stuck on a desert island which in a way you're you're on a little desert island going around the world what would you bring with you? Would you bring a book? Would you bring a, a whatever? So what are the couple of non-essential things that you want to bring with you for your entertainment or, you know, music? Or What are those things that you'll, how you'll entertain yourself in those moments, Peter? Have you thought about it? Oh, God, yeah. That's, uh, yeah, there's a couple of things. Food actually would be one of them. Food will be a, a big part of the day. You sail yourself, as I said, so, yeah. Like even bacon bread and the smell of fresh bread, that's very uplifting. That's very uh Oh for sure. Yeah, it's just it's it's a very comforting yeah. thing. So food will be nice. I, I'll take my time and make nice meals when I can on, on the down times. Uh I'll I'll be catching up and sleep uh when I can. Uh that'll be nice too. Sleep is important. But mostly to answer yeah. your question, uh music would be big. I love music. Um uh, so I'll I'll I, I um I have a nice system on the boat and music will be good. Audio books will be very handy, so I can just put on headphones in bed and listen to them. Uh, oh, lovely! All going well. Uh, I, I my son PJ has has an iPad and he has a little uh, stick that goes into it. I didn't know about this until recently. Uh, yeah, it's a USB that goes in, so I could I could actually watch a movie or something if I if I I don't think I will, but I I'm, I'll bring a few. Um, Brilliant. Yeah. Um, but reading, reading would be good, and music. Uh, I, oh. I I love maintenance. I lo- I love. It's that's why I do what I do. But I'm working on boats. I love fixing things. So I'll be always constantly tipping at things and repairing. And there's rig checks. You know, you're always checking the boat to make sure everything's working well too. So uh, I'd be p- pretty busy, Jonathan. 
So, so a question now is, uh, I've traveled a lot, Peter, and fortunately I have a very supportive wife and I've even, when we've moved countries, I've gone maybe two or three months ahead. Now, I know you have a wife and kids and uh, so I, I guess a truce or a peace or support has all been agreed and we're, we're all good to go. How, how, how is she going to manage the household um, without, we say, Give, give it some bad words. See, ah, he's gone and off and left me for eight months, and hopefully she's good with that. You know, How, how's all that working out, Peter? Because if <laughs> support, support is the most important thing we have, whether that's from our family, our friends, and the community at large who want to help. How, how's the support coming up for you? The support is great. Uh, there's no way you could go off and sail around the world if your wife and children didn't agree with it. Because they probably wouldn't be there when you get back. But no, my wife. Absolutely. Uh, we were sitting having our dinner one day here. And um, I said to Kathy, you know, I said, I still want to sail around the world. I said, I'd still love to. And she said, but why don't you? So um, I, I was kind of trying to act cool, you know. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but <laughs> it, <laughs> Yeah. But. Uh, no, Kathy is a huge support, and as I said, she's she's a huge part of, of my preparation, uh, taking on in her spare time because she's working as well, you know. So, uh, I know it, she, there's great support from Kathy. Uh, my my daughters Emily and Rachel, uh, the very same. They're they're one hundred percent. Rachel is a huge driving force in my whole campaign. She helped get the whole thing off the ground when I went public with it. Uh, she looks after Brilliant. all my social media. Um, my son PJ thinks it's very cool. Uh, so yeah, no, the support is great. My own uh, siblings, e even my mum. My mum is ninety two, and uh, she said, "Can she come? Can she come on the trip?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. fantastic! And uh, uh, what about in terms of support from the? Are, are there things you still need for the boat that would be useful, or or sort of, you know, I, I guess it's not a cheap thing to, to bring yourself around the world. If there's someone watching here, are, are there particular elements that might be useful for help, or how are you managing that part? Yeah, I I I had tried to do it all myself, and I I did fairly well. I bought the boat, and I was fitting her out for a few years, and then. Time and money were against me, so I went public. And the, the support has been great, and the interest has been huge. Uh, I, I'm still looking for a lead sponsor, uh, which would be great. I mean, that, that would just make, transform the trip. Uh, but I'm, I'm probably 80 or 90% there. Uh, I'm on time with everything I wanted to do. I have the boat re-rigged, new sails. Uh, Raleigh Tasker sponsored my sails, which was brilliant. Um, so brilliant. I'm getting there, but yeah, I still need... Uh, you know, there's all the food, uh, my, all my wet gear. I don't have the good wet gear yet. I'm going to buy probably musto or uh, there's, there's, there's a few bits. Yeah, a sponsor at this stage would be great. I also have a GoFundMe uh, if anyone wanted to yeah. donate to that. That would be super, you know. Uh, Brilliant. So, yeah, there's always, there's always, you're always looking for stuff. And, uh, you know, it is quite expensive. And I've spent quite a lot, but I, I'm getting there. So, Brilliant. Okay. Well, for anyone who hears that, who's interested in sponsoring a dream, feel free to help Peter out or contact him and let him know. Um, yeah. So, Sorry, I lost you there for a sec. I've lost connection with you, Jonathan, but um, yeah, so there's good opportunity for advertising on the board. Uh, I still need solar panels, a hydro generator, stuff like that. Um, I think I've lost you. 